Whoa, that's incredibly loud. All right, let's get started. So uh, the title of this talk was originally Adapting Content for Mobile Consumption, um, but in the true nature of adaptation, we actually changed the title to Learning with Mobile to make it uh, easier to consume. So this is about learning, about, uh, learning with mobile, learning specifically uh, on Wikimedia projects. Uh, so just quick introduction. I'm John Katz. I'm the lead product manager for the reading team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And this is Nirzar Pangakar. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yep. He's a design manager for the reading team as well. And before we start talking about mobile, I thought it might be worthwhile to introduce the reading team. Uh, where did it go? The slide is gone. There was no slide. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, the reading team is a year-old team at the foundation, and our goal is to improve the reading experience for all the people reading Wikipedia worldwide. Uh, it's about uh, 25 people, and it's designers, engineers, some researchers, and product managers. And what we do is research our readers, try and understand them better and their needs better, design new features, and then build those features for readers. And uh, in a very simple terms, our basic strategy is to recognize kind of the fundamental aspects of how Wikipedia is consumed worldwide. And essentially, there are, there are, there are regions of the world, uh, they tend to be affluent regions, where Wikipedia is well known and well used. It's used by almost everybody. And in those areas, our role is to adapt Wikipedia and uh, ensure that users, like we retain those users that we currently have using Wikipedia. And in less affluent regions of the world and other places, uh, Wikipedia is not well known, and it's not used very much. Uh, it's actually very surprising uh, to those of us from the United States that um, in some places people just don't know about Wikipedia at all. Uh, and in those areas, our goal is to kind of find new readers, make sure they know about Wikipedia, and make sure that Wikipedia is useful for them. Um, and I will say that like, generally, uh, the goal of the reading team, we've been focusing to date on Wikipedia, uh, but that uh, most of the things we're going to talk about today apply to all the other projects as well. So that's our general strategy, but basically we break it down into three initiatives. And the first initiative is probably the biggest. That's improving the encyclopedia experience, and that's essentially um, taking what we have with Wikipedia, adapting it to modern experiences, and just making it better for our existing users. And then as mentioned, there's an initiative to make it better for places where uh, they don't have gr the greatest internet sometimes, and they don't know about Wikipedia. And right now we're in the research phase of that. Uh, we've sent some teams to uh, Nigeria, India, and Mexico to really to try and understand better how people uh, access knowledge in those places and around the world. And uh, we expect the kinds of features we might build based on that research would be things like offline, uh, capabilities, speed, bandwidth, and uh, language switching. And then lastly, we have a small uh, effort focused on experimentation on uh, new experiences for Wikipedia and the other projects. And uh, currently, our focus there has been on interactivity, making Wikipedia more interactive for readers and potentially identifying ways that we can uh, kind of casually get them interested in editing by having like minor contribution mechanisms. So we don't do this in a vacuum. We don't do this based on our stomachs. Uh, we do this based on data. And uh, the data is both quantitative and qualitative based on measuring how people use Wikipedia. Uh, and also actually speaking with them and videotaping them and like watching them use the site or use new features and understand uh, what we could be doing better. Uh, and then actually going to other places and just seeing how they use the internet in general. So let's jump into the real focus of this conversation, which is mobile. Uh, mobile is real, like you, you can like wink at me or wink from your computer if you think that mobile is not like the dominant paradigm for using the internet these days. You can, I'm, I'm saying you can wink so you don't have to like kind of raise your hand and show yourself. But uh, these next few slides are for you if you winked. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the growth of mobile. Mobile's been growing for a long time and desktop has been shrinking. Um, but we've actually come to the turning point, the point at which there are more people who use only, mobile only in the US than who use desktop only. And that's the US and we expect that the gap is even larger in other places where having a mobile device is the most cost-effective, practical way of using the internet. And we see that this pattern applies to Wikipedia as well. Mobile views are growing pretty rapidly, while desktop is declining also pretty rapidly. 
time to look at some pie charts. So the reason a lot of us aren't kind of familiar with mobile so much is when you look at this room and who we are, 97% of us are still editing on desktop and only 3% are on mobile. Um, but when you look at readers, uh, you see that the, it's about 60-40% in terms of page views. So that's in terms of like the amount of knowledge consumed. But when you look at actual unique devices, meaning that, uh, it, which is a proxy for users, 60% of our users are accessing us through mobile, whereas only 40% are accessing on desktop. And so we see a discrepancy here where more users are using mobile, um, but they're not using it as much. And part of that is just the way mobile works. Mobile uh, tend to have, mobile users tend to like, uh, have shallower sessions, um, and they tend to visit more often. But so far what we've seen on Wikipedia is that people uh, visit more often, but not enough to counter effect the impact of shallower sessions. And the result is, is here. You have two times more page views per month per device on desktop than on mobile. So we're, we're gonna talk about some of the challenges we face with adapting our content for these massive number of mobile users to help uh, rectify that. And so uh, Nirzar is gonna kick that off. Hey, hi. Uh, so uh, as uh, John mentioned, there's this gap of uh, uh, desktop users using uh, uh, reading articles on desktop more than mobile. And we wanted to speak to some of the might be the reasons for that. So uh, we wanted to uh, present a uh, few challenges today for our mobile reading experience. And to make it a little bit easier to sort of present, we wanted to bucket them in three parts. So uh, starting with new reader, uh, starting with new reader, re uh, reader needs. So uh, mobile users used uh, mobile phones to read uh, very differently than how desktop users use desktops. And that basically, uh, you can see that in terms of how people use, uh, in terms of how people use Wikipedia also. Uh, so if you look at the, some of the reader patterns that we have, uh, only less than 10% of uh, readers reach to the bottom of the page on mobile phones. Uh, and like 60% of mobile readers never open any section on um, mobile web. So that sort of makes the top of the article section really important for us. And uh, I wanted to speak to some of the things that we are doing to sort of solve that. So uh, we are doing things like lead images, uh, Wikidata descriptors, and lead paragraphs above the fold to sort of get really high value from a really, uh, when you look at the article in a glance. So you can see the difference here, uh, the value it's providing in, in terms of like uh, before we did the transforms and after we did the trans uh, after. It's, it's way better uh, to understand the topic that you're trying to, uh, trying to learn. Uh, so this makes lead paragraphs really important, uh, and what this means for editors is to so, sort of write uh, summarizing articles into really good lead paragraphs. There already have been some of the editor initiatives like uh, Take the Lead and Wikimedicine in the same uh, in the same direction. So uh, moving from like moving from the quick lookup case, I wanted to speak to the second one, which is uh, the connectivity on mobile is uh, another concern uh, right now. So. Uh, with high data cost and like sparse internet connection, uh, not only in like some parts of the world, but you can see that like a lot of parts of the world, like offline access to Wikipedia is like really important piece of the puzzle. And to sort of uh, sp like to sort of provide to that, we uh, we are doing things like saved pages, and now we are doing things like reading lists to sort of organize your save saved pages on the apps. Uh, and that has been like got a really good reception. Like things like uh, when we released the reading list on Android app, we saw a really good uptake on number of articles that have been saved offline. Uh, to speaking to the poor uh, connection uh, and uh, poor internet uh, connectivity, uh, we are doing things uh, around performance. Things like uh, lazy loading images to sort of cut the uh, data cost and load the articles really fast at the first uh, at the first glance. Uh, so. Moving from the performance and uh, uh, and the use cases, uh, the other thing that mobile users tend to do, and it's a proven pattern now, is to use their phones as a tool to discover new content and without having any particular task in their mind. So you're on a train, you, you want to read something, and you'll go to, instead of going to Wikipedia, you might end up on Facebook or Twitter to, because they sort of uh, deliver a, a discoverability method to su surface the content. And uh, in that same vein, we wanted to do something similar on uh, iOS to sort of uh, surface uh, re really relevant content uh, to you. And also, there is 
a lot of co uh, curated content uh, done by our communities, which is really interesting to read. So as you can see here, like if I read something about Bitcoin, it's telling me uh, other suggested articles, uh, and it's like done in a very privacy-friendly way. Uh, so those were like sort of uh, reader behaviors that we are trying to focus on. But the other big important piece is the article presentation. And yesterday also I had very fruitful conversations with some of the editors about what they think about article layouts. And uh, to, to sort of speak to that, I wanted to uh, go through uh, what is the current status quo of how articles are presented on mobile phones. So uh, our articles have been like historically been written on desktop and uh, even designed for desktop. So uh, viewing, like it's our imperative to sort of make sure that the same content has been uh, is accessible and is a good read, uh, reading experience even on smaller screens. So to just illustrate this point, I wanted to go through so like quickly. I wanted to go through some of the uh, some of the things that we already identified and would like to fix sooner. So things like white tables and sentence wrapping, uh, as you can see, like uh, I'm reading the program of this hack of this Wikimania, and I have to like scroll left and right like three times to just to read one single sentence, which is a really like uh, it, it's breaking my reading experience. So uh, and that is just one thing. So uh, long templates, uh, we sort of squeeze a lot of horizontal content to tall. Uh, content blocks, which makes it really uh, difficult to navigate around the article. And uh, just you can see, like, if I had to scroll four to five times to just to get to the first uh, sentence of Barack Obama article to even know who Barack Obama is. Uh, other things like templates breaking layouts, sometimes templates try, uh, try to like fit entire, uh, try to get the entire width of the article, and uh, then you see something like this, which is completely broken experience. Uh, there are formatting issues with certain uh, certain templates like signposts, which is completely not readable, and uh, it's it's not even like really good to read, but it's just not readable. Uh, then articles with rich media, we don't play a lot of media on uh, mobile phones because of compatibility issues, and sometimes when you're reading, it's really essential for you to listen to a clip of Barack Obama, for example. It's uh, it it breaks your flow of reading too. Uh, and there, uh, these are just some of the things that we have, like we have identified as a priority to fix. But there are these more presentation issues, like uh, precise cursor placements. There are image map with, uh, with graphs and maps where you have to have very precise cursor placement. There are things like you use hover uh, events to sort of display essential information on the article, which is totally lost on mobile phones. So these are uh, these are really basic readability issues that uh, we need to really address. And uh, John will sort of uh, go through the things that we are doing to address these. Yeah, so this is the topic, I think, where editors can have the most impact. Uh, to date, the foundation has done something which uh, hasn't been very uh, sustainable, which is we take templates that don't work on mobile and we transform them uh, so that they do look good on mobile. And what that does is, A, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, and B, it takes the power out of editor's hands because you design a template, you want it to look a certain way, and then somebody else down the line is changing it. And they have to change it three times. They have to change it once for mobile web, they have to change it for iOS, and they have to change it for Android. Um, so it's really not a sustainable solution. And so the steps that we want to take to improve this are to first give you guys the ability to um, style templates for mobile, and then the second is basically create awareness and best practices around doing so. So one is just like the basic ability to do that, and that uh, user, uh, Corin is a volunteer who's working on enabling uh, template-specific styles, which will allow you to basically say, here's how I want it to look on mobile, here's how I want it to look on desktop. And uh, we're supporting him through that. It's, it's kind of in the active stages of development. But the next stage is really about awareness and, uh, and, and outreach. So we basically want to create uh, best practices for, to follow when designing a template or when using a template. Um, we also uh, plan on having like outreach programs and tutorials and things like that. Uh, and then down the line, we hope to get uh, the ability to preview things on mobile so that when you edit something, you're able to see immediately how that is going to look on mobile and potentially even trigger warnings when you've created something or edited something in a way that it's, um, it's not going to appear well on mobile. So the third bucket of issues with uh, mobile is around editor workflows. And this is the one that's 
probably nearest and dearest to people's hearts here. Despite all the problems we mentioned around reading on mobile, editors really can't do very much. And uh, it's a big issue that we want to address, and it's going to uh, it's going to take help from you guys. But first, I thought I'd outline kind of how we got to where we are today and why. So there are two real problems around adding powered, like advanced tools, all the advanced tools we want to the mobile experience. The first is that advanced functionality. There's kind of technical reasons why that why it it uh, won't work on mobile. The kind of same kinds of reasons that it's hard to play media. Things like that, which would require technical rearchitecting, uh, and also redesign. So, if you look at, if you think of the history page that has 13 columns worth of information, it's just not going to work work well on mobile as as currently designed. So that's going to just take a lot of work, and our focus has been on desktop. And then, secondly, uh, there's the issue of menu overload. Uh, the real estate on mobile is just much more limited than on desktop, and so adding all the features that we want to add uh, simply simply won't work, and we have to figure out how we're going to present them and kind of uh, so that you see the tools when you need them, but don't see them otherwise. So here just kind of emphasizes that fact. I can't even fit all the desktop menu items on this screen, on this desktop screen. Uh, there's over 30. Uh, and then obviously, you can kind of dig and find even more. Uh, on mobile, we've really tried to limit it for the sake of our users. Uh, and for that and the re really these reasons described, you'll see that we really focused on building for readers at first. It was the easy thing to do. Uh, it's fairly easy to display an article. It's much harder to do these other things. Uh, and what we found was that in doing so, we created a reading experience that people tend to really, really appreciate. In fact, people uh, often tweet that they like it more than desktop, that they've tried to set it up so that they only see the mobile version of site when reading articles. And uh, there's even a Chrome extension that will convert all your desktop pages to mobile pages so you never have to see the desktop site. Obviously, this is not something editors are interested in. In fact, I hear the opposite from editors. They use the desktop version on their mobile devices. But for the 99% of other people in the world, uh, they really do appreciate this simple reading experience. But obviously, that is not an acceptable outcome. Uh, we, need, we need editing tools both like in all areas, but they're in particular, emerging areas where they're just getting internet and people only have mobile phones and they need to be able to edit and we need to just adapt to this world in which people are more likely to be using a phone than a desktop computer. And so how we get there is really something we have to figure out together. Um, there are kind of two ways of approaching this. Well, one is just we know we need to do the redesign. So this is the mobile-friendly tools axis in the middle there. We just know we have to do that. But the thing that's a little bit harder to understand, and harder to grapple with, and we need help figuring out is where we fit on, on this uh, a certain spectrum. So on the one hand, we could have an advanced site or an advanced mode that power users go to, and all their toys are there. All their, all the, <laughs> I shouldn't call them toys. They're very important tools. Uh, WordPress does this. Other editing platforms do this. The danger there is that an, another important reason we need to enable editing on mobile is that we need to preserve the funnel from people who read Wikipedia to people who participate, contribute, and eventually become power users. So whatever solution we have, we need to somehow hopefully not ruin it for readers while maintaining a way for readers to uh, discover all that Wikipedia has to offer in terms of interactivity and functionality. I think that might be the last slide. Yeah. So just to summarize what we've been talking about today, mobile is dominant. It's unavoidable at this point. Uh, we passed the point at which we could um, stop, uh, it, or rather ignore it. Um, we are essentially optimized for desktop, both in terms of content creation and content consumption. And we are trying to adapt for user needs, but we need help. Uh, so with new, user, n with new use cases, this often means simpler uh, lead articles and, and basically support for having this kind of quick look at things uh, and explore and offline. Uh, the second is presentation, where we really uh, are going to count on people in the community who develop new templates and who work with templates to make them mobile friendly. Uh, and then lastly, in figuring out how we're going to add editing tools to the mobile experience in a logical uh, way that serves the needs of our community. So 
we'll have time for questions, but we also, yeah, we have 10 minutes for questions, which is great. Um, but we also encourage you to email us or go on our talk pages. Um, I hate to admit that reading is probably the most direct, uh, sorry, email is the most direct way to reach us. Um, but uh, yeah, so with that, we'll open it up for questions. Hi guys, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just a really practical question. Yesterday we had a um, discussion about mobile. Um, people from all over the world came together, discussed stuff that's bothering them, and we created, um, uh, there's a list on Etherpad from this conference. Is this gonna be used in your plans to, for the coming months? Yeah, that's a great, uh, a great question. So the answer is, um, partially, uh, there's, uh, there's, it, it would help to provide some organizational context. So we are the reading team, our focus, Nirzar and I at least represent the reading team, our focus is on readers. Um, but we also kind of by default end up being the mobile team because we spend so much time on mobile. There is an editing team, which is a huge team, uh, and they have to date been focusing on desktop. And so some of the things that we talked about, I think, the reading team could kind of take on as an extra task just because we're nice people and we care. Um, but some of the larger things, the editing team, which they're, they're experts in editing and collaboration, they're gonna have to do that. And part of the challenge for them has been when they say that they wanna bring VE to mobile or they wanna do something on mobile, the, their stakeholders, uh, in this case the FTC uh, in the annual plan said, hey, we need you to actually kind of fix a bunch of things on desktop before you focus on mobile. And so, we as an organization and, and an ecosystem need to establish it as a priority if it's gonna happen just because we have limited resources. Hi, two short questions. First, the, the idea of a mobile preview button, this came actually up in the discussion we had. Uh, I wonder if you have a idea how this button would actually work, where it would be. And the second question, uh, I hear the sentence desktop is declining a lot and what you, it's a bit least misleading usually, you know, because it does not mean the total number of desktop um, access goes down, it's the percentage because mobile explodes and desktop is kind of stable. Is this the case here? So I'll answer the second and then let Nirzar answer the first. Um, desktop traffic is declining in absolute terms in addition to relative terms. Uh, we had a slide up before, but it's 19% it's decline over, I think it's year over year, um, but I'd have to double check, but it, it is a significant uh, decline. And mobile is growing uh, as fast in some place, but not as fast in other places. So we're seeing a, an overall um, decline in some places in overall traffic, um, and it's flat in other places, but in almost no areas is it actually growing. Yeah, about the uh, preview on mobile, it's a very uh, it's a very obvious step for uh, desktop editing to sort of look into that. And the the complexity of presentation comes in the complexity of editing. So you're editing a big template or a big uh, table. You need to you need to see how that looks on mobile phones. So it obviously fits into a it fits into the uh, product direction of something like Visual Editor. So th that would make sense. I can't uh, directly speak to the editing team's uh, plans for that, uh, but just I, I think we were having the same discussion earlier and just keeping an eye out on if you are editing something complex on a page, just seeing how it looks on phone uh, is like a good like practice to see if it's breaking. Like we, 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 get, we want to get to a really good reading experience, but we need to get to a like not break, not, not broken experience for us. So I think just keeping an out, eye out is like a good practice, I would say. Hi, my name is Michael and uh, thanks for your talk. Um, yesterday evening I, I made an, uh, uh, an edit on mobile uh, because I wanted to show somebody that it's really easy and it is. Uh, and then that other person told me, yeah, you can even use the visual editor uh, on mobile. And I said, no way. And then it turned out that, because he showed me, uh, that I really can do that. And it, I never noticed because I used the Wikipedia app. And I know you're from the reading uh, department, so my question is, um, that was surprising to me yesterday. 
what role does the Wikipedia app play in your work, or what is the is there any difference for you when you work on mobile access through the browser and uh, via the Wikipedia app? Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, again, similar conversations I've been having like past couple of days, and uh, I, th I think editing on web and apps uh, would come to a, a, come to a very similar place. Uh, I think uh, visual editor on mobile is sort of in a phase where we are trying to figure out some bugs that are not even like visual editor bugs. They are, uh, they are bugs with the platform itself. Things like uh, Safari on iOS has uh, like upstream bugs that uh, make it really easy when your keyboard is up and you're typing something. And we would like to sort of get to a point where it's a, it's not a parity, uh, feature parity of Visual Editor on desktop, but have, uh, let's say, five basic workflows that you need for editing on mobile and have a stable experience first, and then sort of take that and embed it into uh, both the apps, because then sort of embedding things makes it really easy to sort of uh, ship features in the future. So that, that would be uh, the direction for apps and web to sort of work together. So I have a question, and if nobody else has any others, but certainly uh, keep asking. Um, we asked for your input, and we want you to reach out to us on our talk pages and email. Um, but one of the things we do as a reading team is we come up with changes we'd like to make for our readers, and we often have trouble getting feedback on them. And we care about reader feedback, which we get from kind of qualitative interviews, as well as traffic and behavior patterns. Uh, but, but editors are, are really important stakeholders, and, and you're expert users, and uh, you have a lot of say that you make the work, so you should have a say in how it's presented and how people use it. But we've had a hard time reaching people. Uh, so I'm, I'd like to hear from any of you guys, like, where would, where would we pose this question uh, if we have a question about something we should do that would reach you? Um, and I'll, I'll say we've, we've posted a bunch of things on MediaWiki and haven't heard much, um, but yeah. The easy, the easy answer is social media. Besides pages on Meta and stuff, a lot is going on there. Um, there's a group called Wikipedia Weekly that's very active. There's a group for specifically social media in the movement, so you can basically post there and get a bunch of people to give you feedback. Or uh, you can actually open a group specifically for mobile development and ask all the groups to people who are interested to give feedback to join that group. And then there's a place dedicated for that to be an interaction with the community. That's great, thanks. Any other? Thank you. Uh, do you introduce uh, offline capital? capabilities to the software because if you are in a mobile in mo mobile with bad connection the the connection breaks and you can't upload so it's really a problem so, so this is for editing for offline editing, capabilities yeah. that's a question the editing team is going to have to answer i know for reading we're doing kind of the ability to save pages offline and we're even looking to save more of the web Chrome, like the actual kind of structure of the website offline as well, so um, to enable that on web, because right now it's only on apps. But as far as editing is con concerned, I actually don't know. You know? Yeah, we don't, we don't know. Like, they, I've definitely heard it mentioned. It gets talked about, but yeah. It's a very complicated thing, as you might imagine, if you make an edit and then two weeks later you have access again. Yeah, yeah, you get conflicts, as, yeah. Hi, I'm Vera from the Netherlands. Um, I'm mostly focused myself on Wikimedia Commons. Um, have there been any plans to improve the way you can, you know, categorize images and sort them out on your mobile? Because I do it. Um, I do have to reach into some of my um, reserve of. Uh, being sticky to wanting to categorize images because using tools like Catalot and Hotcat on mobile, you uh, function way less smoothly. 
So yeah, we, we've actually identified images as probably one of the things that should be easiest to do on mobile. In fact, easier in many ways than desktop. If you imagine swiping yes or no, or simply, like even a reader could probably, I, I would hope, look at an image and then tag it with a category. Um, we should probably just talk offline because there's a lot of considerations we want to make sure we take into account when doing that because anytime you make it easier for people, you introduce uh, noise. And I know we've had issues with commons, the selfie apocalypse and all that, uh, so we want to make sure we avoid that. Cool. We're done, thanks.